probably dispensing Phonak products. And um, I also want to, um, even before introducing uh, the two of you, I just want to thank you guys again for um, the donation of the hearing aids to our auction. So uh, Phonak has been an amazing partner um, with WHS for for a long time and, and we really do appreciate the support. So um, today we have um, Dr. Stephen Hollenbeck. He is um, audiology education and training manager for Phonak. Um, in his role, Steve provides content and training development for a variety of practice channels within the field of audiology. He has an extensive history within the hearing care industry and previously provided clinical services in private practice and hospital settings, as well as consultative noise abatement services. As a deep passion for audiologic education, has been a guest lecturer around the globe and served as an adjunct faculty member for several AUD and um, hearing aid specialist education programs. So. Uh, welcome to Steve, Thank and you. then of course I believe many of you are familiar also with uh, Dr. John Britton, um, and we appreciate his support at our past uh, meeting as well. He's the clinical trainer with Phonak and covers um, our region as well as uh, Oregon, Alaska, Idaho, Northern California, Alaska, Hawaii, so I'd probably say that's about the best region you could have. <laughs> uh, he received his bachelor degree in communicative disorders from Westchester University in Pennsylvania, and then his AUD from Salus University. And prior to joining Phonak, John worked clinically at a children's hospital, providing diagnostic hearing and vestibular assessments and fit it, fitting traditional amplification and bone conduction devices. He then worked in a rural hospital setting, providing care to patients of all ages for hearing balance and tinnitus, as well as hearing aid fittings and services. So uh, welcome again, John. And I'll go ahead and maybe Rick can turn it over. Um, which, who, which one of you is gonna do the presentation or who will go first? I'll be going first. Okay, I have them set up so that they can both share. Okay. Great. Great. Okay, I will go ahead and share my screen here. Great. I have uh, some good news and bad news. The good news is my kids are in school. The bad news is they're about to come home. <laughs> so there's a bit of raucous in the background. I'll try to uh, shush them up a little bit. But uh, so what that means as well is I'm, uh, I'm not necessarily right by you guys. I'm over in Chicago. So I'm a little bit later on in the day. Um, but uh, thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you for the uh, ability to come and be um, part of the, the meeting and present and talk to you guys today about uh, the Phonak Naida Paradise. And um, I think that's a great introduction. And, you know, John has, we've kind of heard his, his mic's up and running. So I think he's good to go. Um, and then John, anything else you want to say before we get, uh, get off the ground here? No, I'm definitely excited to t tell you guys all about some updates in how you can help um, your severe, your patients with the severe to profound hearing loss in a little bit of a different way. So um, I'll be jumping on a little bit later, but Steve will take it off from here. Cool. Awesome. And then quick, this is the uh, Zoom bingo here. You can see my screen. You can hear me. Thumbs up from Rick and Sandy. Okay, wonderful. Cool. Then in that case, let's, uh, let's get on with the presentation here. So before we begin, I want you to take a moment, please. And I want you to kind of um, visualize a little bit. And I want you to think about a patient that you've had, somebody um, that you've worked with who has severe to profound hearing loss. What words jump to mind when you think of this person? You can feel free to chat them in if you'd like to, although I'm not entirely sure I'll be able to see the chat at this stage of the game, but in order to get some interaction going, you know, please keep those things in mind and we can go back and review a bit later on. 
But, you know, start to think about this person a little bit. And in my career, you know, as both a clinician and as uh, somebody working on the industry side of things, I've had uh, the opportunity to work with patients kind of across the entire spectrum of hearing loss. And so I'm always intrigued and, and sort of um, thinking about the unique slant that each of these different segments presents with, you know? So like people with mild losses, a lot of times they'll show up and they might need something that is sort of on two ends of the spectrum. Maybe it's super broad and transparent. You know, I just need something to put in and that's gonna work all the time across these different uh, scenarios. Or on the other side of that spectrum, they might come back and they say, oh, I've got this like super specific solution. I need to hear people better on phone calls or something like that. But regardless, in this group, it's not uncommon. I've, I've had this experience before. I'm sure you guys have run into this too, where they might say something like, if I forget my hearing aids, I can get by without them, you know? So the sort of like the other phrase for this is they have that sort of situational user thing going on with them. Now, by contrast, the focus of today's presentation is going to be this severe to profound hearing loss segment. And, you know, this is, you know, truly they bring some of the biggest challenges uh, for all of the people that we see across the board. And, you know, so in, in contrast to that other group, these individuals are so reliant on hearing aids that it's make or break. There's no forgetting these hearing aids at home. Their hearing is so closely tied to their well-being, and you know, in one of the the person that jumps to mind for me is a gentleman that I've worked with over the years, um, and what he would report sometimes is actual physical discomfort as his brain was beginning to rewire to new localization cues. And one of these conversations with this gentleman also that resonates with me is this uh, kind of realization that he had as sort of a recovering power user almost and saying, you know, over the years he's fit and, you know, he was using this technology and you know, was always looking for the strongest hearing and the most power and all that sort of stuff. And as technology has evolved, it sort of opened some things up to him where it was like, you know, I was always after this power and now that I've, you know, experienced newer technology, different things, I'm starting to understand the nuance that comes from these devices. So I think that one of the things that I want to frame and use that as a frame for the day is think a little bit about the people that you work with that have severe to profound loss and think about how new technologies, things like the Naida Paradise can open doors for this population um, and experience the, uh, the sounds of these technologies to make sure that well hearing is and becomes well being for this particular hearing aid user segment. So now that you've got that person in mind, you know, I've shared with you my personal experiences a little bit. And um, I want you to keep that story front and center for some individual specifics because before we get into the product story here a little bit, I wanna talk about some group trends that are found in the literature. You know, so what follows is a data set from a larger population. And so while we review this, try to keep that personal focus front and center for you. So I wanna begin and I wanna lead with some prevalence data to share that comes from a couple different organizations here. Uh, first of all, with the World Health Organization, the WHO uh, has some details on this topic. So they estimate the prevalence of disabling hearing loss where the average hearing loss is greater or hearing threshold is greater than 40 dB HL in adults and greater than um, 30 dB HL in children. So this, you know, just, just sort of disabling loss, not anything about the categories behind that, but um, that's being estimated around 460 million people worldwide. And so this is about, of that, about 87 million have a severe to profound degree of hearing loss. And those numbers, they sound like a lot, and in fact, they are. When we consider uh, applying this World Health Organization definition of severe to of severe hearing loss being greater than 60 dBHL, then the prevalence stands somewhere around 2.2% of the general population. We break that down a little further, some of the stats that we look at, and this it takes into account, you know, people who all attend and go to a hearing care clinic, but roughly two out of 10 adults with hearing loss 
that come to um, sort of your, you know, your general hearing aid clinic um, will be expected to have a severe to profound hearing loss. So that takes you know, some of these big numbers like 87 million and then boils it down, breaks it down to some of these things. And I'm sure that as you look at your own practice, that should resonate when I think clinically well, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Probably, you know, throughout the week, if I saw, you know, 10 different patients, about two of them would fall in that very severe to profound category. So while the number seems a little bit manageable when you look at it that way, it gets turned on its side very, very quickly by looking at the challenges that this hearing loss group is met with. So this is some data that comes from Susan Hoover, uh, looking at the um, responses from 36 adults with severe hearing loss and their responses to the speech, speech spatial and quality or SSQ questionnaire and, and the speech subset here. So uh, some of the things to keep in mind is that each person is asked to rate their ability to hear using this continuous scale from zero, not at all, I can't hear very well at all, up to 10, which would be perfect. And what you see here, which should jump out right immediately, is there's no tens here, right? So the top score is around seven and a half. So immediately, um, you know, the, some of the things that patients may say when they um, enter into your, your office is, this, I need every extra bit of gain. That's like the guy that I met, you know, he was saying that when I first started to work with him. So what are the options that we have in order to provide high gain, but also good high performance. Then um, as you go down the list of different activities here, it gets even more and more challenging. So ratings for conversations where there's uh, different talkers, maybe interfering voices, the TV might be turned on in the background. We're getting down to about four and a half. And then when you start to add in extra you know, challenging things with a lot of background noise, you know, it goes down even further to, you know, around a, uh, just over a rating of a three. So these patients, they're, they want to be able to communicate, they want to be able to connect in noise. And that's where we come in, is being able to deliver the right solutions in order to give them access to sound. And again, uh, make sure that they, these difficulties in communication are uh, removed as, as best as we possibly can. So you, you heard my story about that individual with, you know, and again, he's had to go through using new hearing aids and um, kind of relearn to listen to localization cues. You have your own experiences in mind, and now you've seen the group data. So all of these things should paint a picture of the significant challenges and complexities. You know, for severe to profound hearing loss, this extends into every corner of life. So you've got difficulty in everyday communication at work, during social activities, and even maintaining this satisfactory level of overall health. So we, we've seen how, and especially in this day, um, you know, with high levels of social isolation can lead to anxiety and depression. And the, um, uh, the citation on the screen here speaks to the increase in depression among adults with severe to profound hearing loss compared to their better hearing peers. So health and well-being is certainly reduced due to the higher levels of anxiety and stress that's uh, tied into social isolation. And you know, this just has the snowball effect to be um, lead to greater reluctance to participate in social uh, occasions and social situations. So that also to kind of sets up, you know, a, a mantra that we live by at Phonak here, um, where we recognize that hearing well goes much further than just the ability to simply hear sounds clearly, and that we want to keep this um, idea of technology as truly serving the person wearing it, and that it's linked to a greater state of social, emotional, cognitive, and physical well-being. This bigger picture with taking action to treat the hearing loss as a catalyst for well-being, the mantra is what we call well hearing is well-being. So being able to hear well is crucial to the social and emotional well-being, the cognitive function and the physical health. And so when someone with severe to profound hearing loss is fit with a hearing aid, you know, it's we need to deliver on this next level powerful sound. So um, 
when Sandy kicked off the presentation, you know, she mentioned about uh, many of you are maybe fitting Phonak hearing aids clinically. And so this is a, a little bit of some detail about where we are and where we've come from. If you're new to Phonak, if you've never seen any of these things before. Um, so this is a little bit of a timeline about Naida. And within the hearing aid industry, a, a trusted name that's synonymous with power is Naida. So this is, um, there's been a long history of delivering uh, groundbreaking innovations for this segment of individuals with severe profound loss. Uh, one of them that, that jumps out in my, hind, my, in my mind uh, goes back to 2007 with sound recovery. I was just kind of starting my clinical career at that time. And uh, this is one of those sorts of things that um, was groundbreaking within the industry with being able to apply frequency compression in a very, um, you know, ubiquitously fit type hearing aid, you know, this type of thing where it wasn't a specialized frequency transposition aid or something like that. You could get it on, turn it on as a feature and be able to begin to um, provide some audibility and some auditory training for folks who otherwise wouldn't have access to those sounds. The various platforms that rolled out from there, like um, the Spice, the Quest Stereo Zoom with being able to, you know, give good directional focus. I mean, that was huge innovations, all that are able to, you know, address those needs of being able to let users operate effectively across many different environments. So the reason why we're talking a lot about this today is because within the Phonak portfolio, we have a new addition to the family, so to speak, with uh, Naida Power, uh, or excuse me, Naida Paradise, Ultra Power, and then the Naida Paradise um, as a power rechargeable device. So these are some uh, new technologies that have just come out um, over the last few weeks now. So very, um, very new and upcoming technologies. And the, if you're not familiar with these, the, the other P standing for Paradise is related to the Paradise platform. So this was released um, several months ago, probably around uh, August in the RIC form factor that you see across the top. So if you've, um, if you've had the opportunity to, uh, there's a, a bit of noise in the background, questions at all or anything, or uh, just a mic on? Okay, cool. I'll, uh, carry on. Um, so uh, as the, the new stuff is, is the Paradise platform, and if you've had some experience working with that uh, in the past, you'll see some of these things transfer over very closely, and very similarly. Um, within the other parts of the portfolio, you see there's um, the, the Sky products, there's also some new Roger microphones and things like that. So I because um, having a good hearing system is so important to this user group, people with severe to profound hearing loss, I do wanna speak a little bit about our accessories, although I would maybe change the word of accessories over to necessities, you know, thinking about these things as stuff that really brings in the entire communication environment right into that person using the device. So the first couple of accessories that are uh, linkable and, and connectable to uh, the Naida product here are the um, on the screen the partner mic, a remote control, and the uh, TV connector. So partner mic is essentially this um, microphone that's able to be used in one-to-one -one conversations. That's the desire for uh, the the intended usage behind that. Um, the TV connector, obviously TV streaming from the TV straight into the hearing aids, and then the remote control, a good physical remote control that's nice and discreet and easy to use, um, you know, that can be you know, changed from the pocket or something like that without having to use an app to go in and um, make a lot of different changes. Next up, you see these are coming, you know, quite soon. Uh, this available spring 2021, and this is a, a new Roger neck loop is that first one that you see. And I think this one is important, you know, especially to, to give a good educational session about technologies that can be used across the board. The main thing here is uh, if there's a system that's using Roger at some place like a, a lecture hall or, or some other area, something like that. Um, you can have, you can plug in a device, 
put this around the neck and it will transmit to the T coil of another manufacturer's hearing aid. So this is something that Phonak does in order to allow some connectivity outside of just its own ecosystem. And then we'll talk more about this one in detail um, in the next, later on in the presentation, where we'll get into the um, Roger On, which is the latest update in the Roger technologies. So I'm gonna save a little bit more on that. Then last but not least, some of our legacy technologies like the Select, the Table Mic, those are also compatible with the Naida P devices that we're about to go through in, in more detail. So hopefully what that does is gives you kind of an overview of the different types of technologies that are available. And then let's talk a little bit now about how those begin to link up with, uh, with end user needs for people with severe to profound hearing loss. So uh, as mentioned, the, the tagline here, there's nothing like the sound of paradise. And in fact, that can be carried over into our severe to profound population. And there's uh, nothing like the sound of Naida paradise. So here's those two devices that I mentioned just at the beginning of the presentation here, where we've got the Paradise Ultra Power on the left side of the screen here. It's powered by a 675 battery. And then we also have a power rechargeable device. So this is um, something that is uh, chargeable using the case, the RIC charger that you see on the screen here. And then there's a couple of different color offerings that are there uh, available. So again, this is just device overview. Now let's uh, get into what makes an AIDA, an AIDA specifically. So uh, both the UP and the PR combine next level powerful sound, universal connectivity, and a rich suite of personalized digital solutions and smart apps for your patients. So as I mentioned earlier, the Phonak, um, or that we launched the Paradise, excuse me, the Paradise platform just a couple of months ago. So this layout, even visually, if you've been through some of the trainings, might look fairly familiar to you. So this is our, um, the, the UP specifically, is a very anticipated ultra power device uh, for patients with severe to profound loss. Um, it's powered by our PRISM chip, which is um, uh, the sort of engine underneath it all. And there's a powerful double receiver in order to give all of the necessary power benefits that these patients may be, um, may be after. Uh, there's a T coil and as well, there's some new hearing performance features and John's gonna speak to those in great detail in a little bit. Uh, now there is some um, very cool and unique updates on universal connectivity with being able to connect to um, all sorts of Bluetooth devices, two active connections. Um, and then last but not least is the uh, personalized digital solutions with the MyPhoneAC app. And those have some you know, great ability to provide uh, interaction that we've not seen before in the industry with allowing people in this hearing loss segment to be able to go in and fine tune their devices and really engage with all of the options that are available to treat their, uh, their hearing loss in a way that we've not been able to do in the past. So again, very, very cool stuff. Now on the PR side of things, there's a few different technological change ups here. We'll, we'll talk through what all these mean uh, in the coming slides, but um, this one is able to hold a motion sensor within it. So we've got, we're able to turn on a feature called motion sensor hearing, and then also tap control. Then other than that, you know, it's a, um, obviously it's a slightly lower power and output um, device. So that's uh, um, one differentiator between that and the ultra power. And then, um, and then this motion sensor thing. Apologies, you may hear the dog in the background. That means that the kids are here and having a, a great time. So <laughs> sorry about that if it is uh, intrusive at all. We'll try to keep him down and uh, you know pulled aside. I think it's maybe time for a walk. So with that, let's uh, dig into um, some of the key aspects of um, the uh, what we what we refer to as next level powerful sound. Now, with the sound processing chip is we've got double the memory here. And so that's gonna come into play when we talk a little bit more detail um, with some of the things in the app specifically, because through that, we're able to um, do some different programming options. 
um, and we have the space to be able to work around with that. So also with a new chip, oftentimes comes just kind of improvements in processing and sound quality in general. Um, it's sort of like when you get a new computer and it, it just runs faster, runs better, cleaner sound, all that kind of stuff. Now the power output here, what we're looking at is 140, 141 dB for the UP receiver, 130 dB for the power rechargeable. That translates into some fitting ranges like what you see on the screen here where you have um, you know, fitting with the PR up to around the uh, severe loss and then the UP going all the way and being able to kind of uh, bridge that gap for your severe to your most profound losses. A few other odds and ends here. Um, with the hardware, I mentioned there's a motion sensor. So this is a triaxial accelerometer and it supports motion sensor, which is going to do some fine tuning things with the directional beam when it detects that a patient is walking. And then tap control is a feature that allows um, the uh, the user to simply tap the pinna or the hearing aid itself and it will trigger a couple of specialized functions so again it's that it's detecting the the motion uh the quick motion of the hearing aid in order to tell it what to do now that's present in the power device and what's important to know is that between that and the rechargeability here there is no t-coil so in your ultra power one you had the t-coil in your uh, power rechargeable, you do not because of the um, ability to fit those components in there, keep them isolated and, um, and performing optimally. Now, as far as uh, battery life on these rechargeable devices is the claims that you'll see when you uh, look online and things like that will uh, describe a 24 hour use on a single charge. And, you know, we tend to think about that in terms of a 16 hour day of use, where say, for example, uh, somebody can be expected to get eight hours of listening through an auto sense program, the automatic program, maybe four hours through the uh, Bluetooth classic streaming, and then four hours of streaming from a proprietary device like a TV connector. Um, so I think one of the other things to bear in mind with that, and I'll, I'll reference it also in terms of the battery life for the battery powered UP device, which gives about 11 days of battery life. And again, we could have estimated around that 16 hour use day. Um, I would say that these, uh, these levels are probably a bit uh, conservative. You know, uh, what we did as well when we tested this was we used what's called an N7 audiogram in order to do this. So this is uh, like um, 90 dB thresholds at 250 Hertz and 95, you know, from like 1K up through six. So that right there is telling you that the hearing aid is, is drawing enough power to give sort of maximum amplification um, for that, you know, N7 type loss. Uh, a few other things here. The, the last thing that I want to bring up in terms of next level powerful sound is to discuss some of the things with a new fitting formula that we've uh, um, provided within the uh, Naida Paradise here. Is um, We've rolled out APD or Adaptive Phonak Digital 2.0. So this is a new fitting formula that uses adaptive compression speeds and then has an additional knee point for loud sounds. And then the formula has been designed to balance this audibility, loudness, and sound quality and provide good natural sound. And then in a few minutes, John's going to take over and talk about the new features that are built into AutoSense OS. But I think the last thing that's important to know about with um, uh, APD 2.0 is that it's this, um, you have this tremendous ability to be able to um, provide great speech contrast and uh, maintain audibility for patients with severe to profound hearing loss. So I think the first thing is that for APD 2 is you've got fast and slow compression built into it adaptively to be able to preserve the important relationships between loud and soft sounds and um, allowing the people who like this, this uh, category of hearing loss to be able, to, when they rely on those speech cues, that relationship is maintained so that they're, so that that, like that gentleman that I mentioned at the beginning, 
they don't have to go through that whole sort of rewiring in order to get used to the, um, the new sounds. There's also um, an option in the fitting software called APD Contrast. And there's really, it's, it's, it's a kind of an area of professional judgment where there's no true hard and fast rules to indicate, oh, this patient should get contrast, this one should get the, the standard version of it. Um, but in general, I think we find that a lot of patients with severe to profound hearing loss uh, prefer the contrast sound quality. But this is again, another tool in your tool belt to help you know, meet the listening needs um, that they, they uh, may come in and present with. Now I do wanna just from a training perspective, show you what this looks like in the fitting software. So on our main landing page in the software, you'll come here and in the global tuning page under initial fitting, you'll see your choices for um, adaptive Phonak Digital 2.0 and Adaptive Digital Contrast. So this is the screen where you're able to actually go in and have that conversation about what is the sound quality like, how are you experiencing it just now in the clinic, and setting them up for success in the long run. So we've gone through a few things here so far with thinking about, you know, who's that person that's going to benefit from this technology? What are the options that are available for you just in, in the basic sound and power of the device? So I'm going to turn it over to, to John now, and uh, um, he'll take it away and discuss some of the key features and how those associate with the needs of people with severe or profound hearing loss. So John, a quick question is, um, shall I stop sharing and then you'll run the slides or do you just want to tell me to advance? Since we're going to be bouncing back, if you could just keep it up, Steve, I think that'd be great. Wonderful. Okay. I have to say, before I jump into this part of it, um, that contrast formula has saved my behind on many occasions. Um, and I think especially when we think of this population of people that we're seeing that have that severe to profound hearing loss, their needs are so different. Um, and out of anyone that we see, we can't put them in a bucket at, by any means. So having the flexibility within the software to try different things like slowing down the compression speed is definitely a really nice thing, as Steve said, as that tool like in your back pocket to just keep on hand in case you need it. Um, and Steve, when you started at the beginning about think of a patient um, who you've seen that has a severe to profound hearing loss, um, I usually don't have to think too long um, before I can pick a name um, in my mind. Uh, and so usually one specific person comes to mind and that is Sandra. Um, and Sandra was one of my favorite patients for many reasons. Um, she was also probably my most challenging patient for many reasons as well. Um, and so for her, having that good foundation of a fitting formula, as well as different things to try when it came to a fitting formula, was really important for me to have for her. Um, now, auto set, or I'm sorry, adaptive phonak digital, that fitting formula is the foundation. And then with any hearing aid that we have, we also have these automatic features that build on top of that foundation to try to help people in more challenging situations where we know that they're going to come up and, and talk about problems that they're having. So when we launched the Paradise platform back in August, we introduced these three new features within AutoSense, which are dynamic noise cancellation, speech enhancer, and motion sensor hearing. And I'll start first um, with dynamic noise cancellation um, and just give a little bit of a, what is it first? Uh, and dynamic noise cancellation is a spatial noise canceller that we're using in conjunction with the directional microphones that we have always used in our speech and noise programs in the past. Um, and by doing this, by focusing that specifically to the sides and behind that patient, um, we can provide an additional 4 dB SNR improvement with this feature. Um, and if we take a look on the next slide, we can take a visual look at what that kind of looks like. Um, and if we start on the left with this omnidirectional microphone, we can see when there's a lot of noise 
that speech signal just kind of gets drowned out, of course. This is something that we know. Um, and Steve, if we can go forward with, with all of them here. Um, ultra zoom is kind of our standard directionality. And then stereo zoom right in the middle there is our narrowest beam of directionality. Um, and up to this point, we were, that was the best SNR improvement that we could really provide someone. Um, and if you see all the way over on the right hand side of the screen, by using that stereo zoom directional microphone with dynamic noise cancellation, we can really pull out that speech signal even better than what we were able to in the past. Um, now, as we've been saying, this is not a homogenous group of people that we're working with and they have different needs, different goals for their hearing. Um, so I do just wanna show a screenshot of the software um, in something that is different related to the UP model for Naida Paradise. Um, we have made the decision that dynamic noise cancellation will be defaulted off for your UP fittings. And the reason for that is because Generally speaking, this patient that we would be fitting a UP device on doesn't appreciate feeling isolated from their environment. So while certainly reducing that noise could help them, um, overall their experience is not as good um, if they're not able to have that sense of awareness of their environment. Obviously it's there. So you can enable that for that person that needs that additional help and is telling you that they want that. Um, but the other piece of that is the patient has control over this as well. So within the MyPhoneAC app, they can control the speech focus slider and that will give them their own control in real time over that feature whenever they need it specifically. So dynamic noise cancellation is one of the new 90 level features that we have. And on the complete opposite side of that, we have um, speech enhancer. Um, and so speech enhancer is an another 90 level specific feature within the Paradise platform. Um, and again, just to give a little, what is it? Um, speech enhancer is really meant to help give your patient better access to soft sounds and specifically modulated signals. And generally speaking, when we think of a modulated signal, we think of speech. Um, so whenever your patient is in a quiet environment and there's this modulated signal present, speech enhancer will automatically give this boost to the 30 to 50 dB inputs of that modulated signal. Now this was really designed to help with can we go back uh, one slide, Steve? Um, this was really designed to help with those comments about my my spouse tries to talk to me from the kitchen when I'm sitting in the in the living room and they expect me to hear, um, or my grandkids come over, they're so soft spoken, I just can't understand anything that they're saying. This is meant to help with that, and in the past I could only control that with counseling, um, which. I'm a fixer, so I was fine with counseling, but I wanted to be able to fix that problem. Um, and so speech enhancer is really the way to help with that. Um, I do just wanna say, kind of put it out there, when it comes to a profound loss, potentially how we counsel our patient may be a little bit different in relation to this feature. Um, because something like footsteps, are also a modulated signal. Um, and for someone that has a profound loss, the ability for them to have a better awareness of someone walking up behind them um, is just as important to them as being able to hear that person from a different room as well. And then that, that third and final um, new automatic feature within AutoSense is motion sensor hearing. And with the motion sensor chip that we're using in the rechargeable models of Paradise, we're really adding this extra layer of intelligence to this system. So it's not only noise that is telling the hearing aid how to handle certain situations, it's also movement now. Um, and so with that, whenever you have a, a patient that takes six steps or after they take six steps, 
that motion sensor chip will recognize that motion and then change the directionality of the microphones into, we call it real ear sound, but essentially a, an omnidirectional microphone with the pinna effect taken into account. So if you have a, a patient that has a family and they are walking through the food court at the mall, um, that person wants to be able to hear their kids that are behind them. They want to be able to hear their spouse talking next to them without having to turn around to always keep an eye on someone. But then they also want, whenever they stop and try to take their order at the counter, they want to go back to directionality so they can focus on that person they're talking to. And motion sensor hearing will allow them to do that as well. Um, now within the software, um, I do just want to give a little update um, to where you can change this, um, or I should say, we've made it a little bit easier to find it now. Um, so where you find this feature within the target software is under program options. And then you have to click on the header on the left-hand side that says AutoSense OS 4.0. Now it's, that's a little buried. I totally get that. Um, so what we've done here now is that when you go into the speech and noise programs, there will be a little link. And then if you click on that, that'll just take you directly to where you need to go. Um, and it does default on for everyone, but you can either turn it off or make it less of a shift um, so that they're still getting access to it, but just maybe not as big of a change for them. Now that, um, so we, we talked about the updates to the fitting formula, some of those new features within AutoSense are going to help people even further in some of those really challenging situations. Um, but we also know that hearing aids need to do more nowadays than just help someone hear better in their environment, right? They need to be connected to all of the technology that's going on around our lives nowadays, especially over the last year. Um, so with the Paradise platform, um, we did make some updates to the connectivity um, within our hearing aids. Um, and the big one that everyone will get benefit to from the 90 level hearing aids down to the 30 level hearing aids, rechargeable or battery operated, is that we can now pair to eight Bluetooth devices at a time. Um, and of those eight Bluetooth devices, two of them can be an active connection. And so what I mean by that is if you have a patient who is watching a show on their iPad and then a call comes in on their phone, they just answer that call, automatically start streaming, they hang up. All they have to do is just press play on their iPad to initiate that again. Um, and so no more trying to explain to people how they turn their Bluetooth off and on because um, that honestly, for many people is just a barrier that oftentimes can't be overcome. So not only do we have those eight, eight pairings and then two active connections, but as Steve mentioned towards the beginning, we also have the accessories that we can offer our, your patients as well. So they can be connected to two Bluetooth devices. They can be connected to the TV with the TV connector. They can have someone wearing a partner mic. They could have Roger and all of those things could work really seamlessly with each other. Now, if um, your patient is fit with the rechargeable device of Paradise, um, they also get access to another new feature, tap control. And Steve mentioned this, just have to tap the pinna don't have to go for the hearing aid for this, um, but with a double tap of the pinna, a person would be able to answer or end a phone call. Um, they can pause or unpause anything that they're streaming. Um, and for me, like the really cool thing is that they can activate the voice assistant on their phone. Um, so Siri, Google Assistant, any of those onboard virtual assistants on someone's phone can be accessed with a double tap of the ear. And because we do use the microphones of the hearing aid to pick up that person's voice, they can be 30 feet away from their phone, double tap their ear, initiate a call or send a text message or check the weather even. Um, so easy, efficient, 
I think oftentimes for some people where technology is overwhelming, this could be something that's way less overwhelming that could make their technology more accessible to them. Um, and in the software, you are able to tell that system what that tap is supposed to do. Um, the patient can configure that also for themselves. Um, and then there's also a training system that we can use to make sure that that person's comfortable with it. Um, so we're not training the system, we're training the person in essence, just make sure that they're comfortable with how to do it. So when it comes to connectivity, the Paradise platform, and I think specifically when we talk about Naida and these people that have a severe to profound hearing loss, we are able to set them up for success when it comes to technology. So universal connectivity, iPhones, Androids, as long as it has Bluetooth 4.2, we can connect our hearing aids to it. Um, that hands-free phone calls, this is the only option for a, a power device for severe to profound people that have that allow people to not hold their phone up to their face whenever they're on calls. Um, we're going to go into Roger in much more detail, but also just that ease of use whenever it comes to using multiple Bluetooth devices is going to be really nice um, for this patient population as well. Now I'm going to bump it over back to Steve here to talk a bit about Roger, um, but really Roger is where it's at <laughs> whenever it comes to this population with severe to profound hearing loss. Yeah, and I, I think the, the key takeaway there is that you've got a population here that's very willing to get in there and try these different things because of the reliance that they have on the technology. And you know, to that end, it's, it's impossible to have a discussion about Naida's sound performance without also talking about Roger. This, of course, is one of the digital standards, um, and I'd say the digital standard for remote microphones, um, of being able to provide not only a streamed signal from uh, you know, someone remotely into the hearing aid, but also due to all of the automation that's built into um, cleaning up the background noise, as well as some of the interactivity with being able to connect to other Roger devices. I mean, it's huge. Then last but not least is with Roger Direct, something that's been out there for a little while was one of the barriers, of course, to using that technology was that there was several different pieces. Roger Direct is embedded now, um, can be embedded into the devices. And then um, with this one in particular, and John, help me out here a little bit, but I believe that it's uh, embedded in the trial devices themselves so that as people begin to use them, it's there. So that whole barrier has been you know, taken away. Yep, that is correct. So in our demo units, you won't have to go through that installation process to demo Roger to a patient. So they are, it's just there. You just have to connect the microphone to the demos. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we've talked about, um, you know, the table mic and the select. Those are two that probably, or I should say we haven't talked about them. They've been around for a little while. Um, they will connect to the Naida P devices. Um, uh, the things that are coming new and down the, the road here a little bit are the uh, Roger on devices. Um, and I want to spend a little bit more time with that. The last thing on that um, topic of the um, Roger Direct is that also too, from an end user perspective, makes the device smaller and lighter on the ear. So again, it's one of those barriers. Uh, back when I started practicing, you know, you, you could just see the different things being added onto it, you know, causing the ear to almost like kind of be weighed down in some cases by the amount of things that were being um, put onto the end of it. So for the Roger on, we've kind of broken it in to to some of these different categories. Um, if you've worked with Roger in the past um, and with the what we mentioned with the select and the table mic is this is a little bit of kind of the best of all worlds here. Because of the design, you can see it's sort of like a elongated you know, shape here where it can act both as a microphone, you know, like the pen, if you've had some experience with that, as well as something that can sit on the table. Uh, Multi-beam technology is able to, you know, kind of scan the room and from a, a stationary perspective, automatically choose, you know, directions or it can be directed by the patient themselves in order to pick out um, the specific sound that they, 
the, the direction, I should say, that they want to pay attention to. Um, so there's a lot of versatility, again, kind of getting towards that um, idea of having one singular device that works very effectively across a multitude of different situations. What we've seen from some of our internal research here, I actually should say external research, um, is these uh, ideas that multi-beam, because it's going to adaptively work to reduce background noise and emphasize speech, that these that the um, understanding and background noise improves by up to 61 percent. Um, these tests were done where we're looking at uh, pretty some pretty significant. Um, environments, you know, we're, we're talking about like, you know, 75 dB of background noise, 70 of speech, so this um, negative five SNR situations. Uh, so this is, this is big, and it will also tie into our different um, CI op, um, offerings and bimodal things, and so th there's a lot of different applications, again, for the uh, severe to profound community in general here. Uh, the other thing that uh, we know we wanted to kind of touch upon today was um, the influence that this um, that this technology can have in so many different situations with that mantra that I referred to earlier. We saw that this is not the type of thing that people can go without. You know, this isn't people leaving things at home and forgetting them. They need them all the time. And work can be one of those, you know, very significant places uh, where people are going to need help in order to hear well. So um, I'm going to kick it back over to John to discuss some of the new reasonable accommodations that have been brought about by the ADA and some these are these great clinical takeaways in order to address this so people can um, use them. And then that, that barrier that oftentimes comes up with price then it becomes a much more manageable discussion to have. Yeah, so Steve is spot on with that we have a mantra at phonak of well hearing is well being um another mantra or I, I guess you should say our mission statement is really that we believe that anyone with a hearing loss should be able to live a life without limitations and um as we talked about earlier every environment with someone that has a severe to profound hearing loss is posing some level of challenge to them in most cases and I can't imagine being in those shoes and having the stress of like, am I able to actually perform my job because of this? Uh, and so to let you know, um, to help with your patients in order to improve that aspect of their life, to feel more confident and comfortable in work, um, as well as potentially to help overcome that barrier of the cost of a Roger system, we want to let you know that we have resources available for you and for your patients. So the Americans with Disabilities Act, hearing loss falls under that. Uh, and a reasonable accommodation could be a Roger system if that Roger system would allow that person to perform their job, their just basic duties in a better way. Uh, and so I wanna point your attention to that green column there um, because there's a website listed, morethanahearingaid.com slash ADA. Um, and if you go to that, it gives you some, one, there are links about just basic information about the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, so you're aware of what types of businesses, what size of businesses are um, required to comply to that. Um, and as well as some downloadable fill them out templates that can be used as that formal request to your patient's employer uh, for that reasonable accommodation for a Roger system. Um, and you saw we have many different types of Roger microphones that do some different things. Um, and a part of that website or a part of that process is also you can um, use an easy guide that we have available on our website where you can pull out different types of challenges or listening situations that your patient will be in at work or at school, rank them on order of importance. And at the end of that, you will be given um, a recommendation on a microphone or a, a set of microphones that would meet um, that person's specific challenges that they're facing. 
Now, the, the last area where we made some improvements was within the personalized digital solutions or really the, the MyPhoneAC app. So the MyPhoneAC app has four different areas to it. Um, and when we released the Paradise platform, we had some updates to three areas specifically. So the remote control being one, um, remote support, uh, which allows for that real time program adjustments with a video call component um, with all of our Marvel and Paradise hearing aids. And then with Hearing Diary, one update we made there was that you as that person's provider would be able to send your patient a task. So basically do this activity with your hearing aids and then without your hearing aids, you're forcing them into this AB comparison so that when you see them next, you're gonna have some fantastic feedback about how they're doing. Um, one thing that I wanna focus on with the remote control aspect of it um, are some updates that will, that will be coming up here shortly. Um, one comment that I get consistently with our app is that, John, I wish when my patient made a change in the app, when they took a phone call or started listening to music, I wish it would stay in those changes that they made whenever they came out of it. Um, and in a few months here, spring of 2021, we will have an app update that will allow for just that. Um, so it's something called My Phone Act Memory. So if your patient creates a custom program or if they make a change to their settings, uh, if they get out of that and then when they come back into it, they will revert back to those custom settings now. Um, and another really cool part of that is that they can add a custom program onto their button of their hearing aid. So if their phone dies or if they're just not near their phone, um, they would be able to still access that custom program that they like with the long press of the button of the hearing aid itself. Now, another just general resource that I want you all to be aware of um, is something called hearing success. And with Phonax close relationship with Advanced Bionics, um, we are able to benefit from the resource that they have. Um, and Hearing Success is a free online portal that really anyone can sign up for that can, I see it as a way to give your patient some directed oral rehabilitation, um, where they can go through these progressively more difficult listening situations where they can practice, kind of retrain their brain on how to hear things in a different way. Um, and overall, just help build their confidence with their new technology and help with that acclimatization period, especially if we're fitting them with a new platform. Um, so if you just direct your patient to hearingsuccess.com, um, they can create um, a free account um, and can have access to all of those tools um, right there on whatever device that they have. Um, and of course, then share that information with you so you can also help track their progress. Now, when we really think of this patient population who has a severe to profound hearing loss, they are, we need to approach this with much more than just a hearing aid. Um, so of course, a hearing aid with features that will meet their specific needs is going to be important. Um, but what else can we offer them? Um, maybe a Roger system, may, maybe accessories. Beyond the hardware, we also need to think about treating that person as a person as well. Um, and what are their unique challenges that they face? What are the stressors that they are having because of their hearing loss? And beyond the technology, what can I do? What can we do to try to help with that? And tying in this message of well hearing is well being is going to help. Getting that person's family, their communication partners involved is going to help. Um, I think even something as simple as telling them, hey, there's this website called Hearing Success where you can go to and practice your listening skills is going to really help them feel more confident. Um, and I also just wanna make you aware of um, 
something that has recently come out uh, that Phonak helped put together. Uh, we basically uh, corralled a bunch of industry, uh, just audiology experts in the world of severe to profound hearing loss from researchers to people in the clinic at the moment to people who are teaching students now. Um, and they looked at all of the research available um, and put together this guideline for best practice in the management of people with a severe to profound hearing loss. Um, so if you have um, some time for some nice light 108 page reading, um, you can download this directly from our website. Um, but I will say one takeaway that I really took from this is that the system, so not just the hearing aids, the assistive listening devices, the extra things need to be a part of that conversation from the first conversation. Um, and I think that that is something that you'll be talking about plenty today. Um, and so Roger could be a part of that. Something as simple as T-coil is going to be a part of that. So I just want to thank you all so much for your time today. Um, I know that when I think back to my patient, Sandra, um, I wish that I would have been able to help her better with um, hearing her grandkids more because that was a big problem for her. Uh, her. She broke down crying one time in the office because it was so difficult for her to hear on the phone. Um, and being able to easily switch between different Bluetooth devices would have been huge for her. Um, and so if you have any questions about our product specifically or just in general about the audiological management of people with a severe to profound hearing loss, please um, reach out to me with any questions that you do have.